guys, uh, welcome back to the garage. And as most of you guys know, what I usually do on this channel is document the process of going through a frame up restoration on this uh, 1977 Datsun 280Z here. But today we're going to do something a little bit different, something that I've never done before, which is a product comparison test or a review of the various paint strippers that you can find at your uh, local big box store. So this episode is being filmed in November of 2019 and at this point it's impossible to talk about the effectiveness of various paint strippers without at least briefly discussing usage of a particular chemical called methylene chloride. Uh, and as an everyday consumer, if you go shopping for paint strippers, uh, you'll find that most paint stripper containers prominently state that it does not contain this chemical, uh, methylene chloride, or at least that it is non-toxic. And if you do a little bit of research on what this chemical is, you'll find some interesting stuff. So I have a uh, quote from a website called saferchemicals.org, uh, which explains what this chemical is. Methylene chloride, also known as dichloromethane or DCM, is a solvent used in a range of products. The average consumer is most likely to encounter it in paint strippers, although safer alternatives exist. Methylene chloride has been linked to cancer, cognitive impairment, and asphyxiation. And if that doesn't sound scary enough, uh, I found a, a quote from a short investigative piece uh, from CBS This Morning, which aired in June 21st, 2018. And I quote, Now, EPA scientists have said that this chemical poses an unreasonable risk, but products containing methylene chloride have been sold to consumers for years. We've told you how victims, usually young men, have died doing things like stripping paint off of a car, for example. Those families have been pushing for action not for not only at the EPA, but at the retail level. And again, this was back in June 2018. So I'm not here to talk about whether or not I think EPA regulations are good or bad. Um, this is just not that kind of channel. What I do know for certain is that I don't really want to use um, the, a paint stripper that contains that chemical based on what I've read, even if I could find it. And if you look hard enough, you can find it. Um, either you can find stock that uh, hasn't been sold off yet, or if you're a professional, you still have access to paint strippers that contain this toxic chemical. Um, I just don't want to mess with that. So here's what we're here to find out. Have the paint strippers that are available to everyday uh, consumers like myself, have they been neutered? or can they still work in the automotive application? So now let's introduce the seven contestants in this uh, product comparison test, which I've ordered from least expensive to the most expensive. Interesting. So the first up, we have Max Strip and Easy Strip, which both of them were identical in price, coming in at $9.47. They look really pretty similar. So I th actually thought it was the same product, but it's two different brands. Next up, we have Citri Strip, which is slightly more expensive at $12.48. Uh, looks like it smells pretty good, but hopefully I won't be smelling that too much. Uh, and next we have the only paste in the uh, competition, which is called Multi-Strip multi Advanced. This is yet even more expensive at $14.97. Coming in one cent more expensive is um, this Quick Strip by Clean Strip, which is $14.98. Uh, then we have this product, which was actually recommended by one of my uh, viewers. This is by Jasco, uh, premium paint and epoxy remover. Apparently it works in 15 minutes. Sounds pretty good to me. But this is pretty expensive, coming in at $16.97. Now the last one that we have here is also by Clean Strip, so the same brand as this one. But this is called the Aircraft Paint Remover, which is the most expensive at $17.99. What I will do is test uh, these products on a variety of different surfaces, including a skid plate that's coming off of my Tacoma truck, uh, which is a little rusty and I've been needing to clean that up for a while. Um, we'll also test it in the engine bay, we'll test it in the exterior paint. And the last thing that I'll mention is always use uh, proper PPE. 
Um, to protect your eyes and your lungs from working with a lot of these chemicals. Now, all of them do say that it's not toxic, but I'm betting that you don't really want to test that claim uh, by getting some of it in your eye or breathing in too much fumes. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first two that will be applied is the max strip on the left and easy strip on the right. Uh, I don't have very high hopes for either one of these given how cheap they were, but I'm also secretly hoping that price doesn't matter at all and these all perform the same so I can save some money. Uh, the max strip on the left goes on easy enough, although the consistency is pretty thin and I think it's going to dry up pretty fast. The easy strip on the right is is actually pretty bad in terms of ease of use. It really clumps up and it's very hard to lather it on evenly, even on a flat surface, and this would be even worse on a vertical surface. Um, the consistency really kind of reminds me of applesauce. We'll cover up all the test areas with a plastic sheet immediately after applying the stripper to prevent them from drying out and to give ourselves the best chance of success here. Next pair up is the Citri Strip on the left and Multi Strip Advanced on the right. Um, I actually think it's kind of amusing that on the Citri Strip bottle, it actually says that it has a citrus scent. Um, I'm not sure why they would advertise that or go through the trouble of making a caustic chemical smell like oranges, uh, but if you're working indoors, it may be a benefit for you. I do really like the Citrus Strips, uh, gotta hate saying that, Citrus, citrus Strip. Uh, I do really like the citrus strips consistency, uh, it is pretty thick, it goes on nice and smooth, and it's easy to put on a nice even coating on the surface. Uh, the multi strip on the right, I do have to take some points away for making the container such a pain in the butt to open and close, it's so impractical, uh, but it does go on relatively easily as well. The last three are the most expensive ones, Quick Strip on the left, Jasco in the middle, and Aircraft on the right. There's not a whole lot of difference between um, these in terms of how easily these are applied, although if I had to pick one, I'd say that the Jasco one is probably the easiest to spread, and the Aircraft one on the right is uh, probably the thickest, it's almost like Jello. Uh, one thing that I will note here uh, is the smell. Uh, I'm wearing a respirator, so I really couldn't smell anything up until the last one, the aircraft stripper. This thing stunk enough that I could actually smell just a bit of it through the respirator. It's not necessarily a super unpleasant smell, but it does smell really strongly. So I laid down a pretty thick coat on all seven sections and left it covered for about two hours. Of course, the first sections had a little bit more time to work than the last sections, but we'll give them that advantage since they were cheaper. Uh, so I'm gonna take off the plastic wrap, give all the sections a good scrub with a metal brush, and wash the entire uh, skid plate down with water, and after it dries, we'll take a close look at how each section did. In terms of cleaning this up with water, uh, most of the products were easy to clean off except for two of them. Uh, number four, the multi-strip, and number seven, aircraft. Uh, these didn't really dissolve well with water and I had to spend more time in those areas um, kind of brushing them off than the others. The multi-strip really became powdery around the edges like dried up paint and I had to scrub pretty hard to get it off. Uh, the aircraft uh, one didn't become powdery, but it, it was caked on there pretty hard and it didn't really dissolve readily with water either. Well, it's been cleaned off and dried, so let's take a look at how they all did. Now, keep in mind, this is a skid plate, which constantly gets pelted by rocks, sprayed with salt, and generally undergoes a ton of abuse as a protective plate. And knowing this, manufacturers use some of the, the most durable paint that they have available on um, plates like this, so it makes sense that this is a tough challenge for consumer-grade paint strippers. But some of them did do a much better job than others, so let's take a look at um, how they all did and compare. 
The first one, Max Strip, didn't do much at all. It made the paint a little bit more dull, but I think that has more to do with the metal brushing than anything else. Number two, Easy Strip didn't do much better either, and the result looks pretty identical to the Max Strip. I think it's safe to say that neither one of these uh, will be the best one out of the seven. With Citrus Strips section number 3, it does start to get a little bit more interesting. It didn't take off too much paint, but you can actually start to see some bare metal here. Multi Strip in section 4 actually put in a respectable amount of work on the paint. It was, it was a pain to clean off, but it looks like the effort was worth it. Given its price, I was a bit disappointed by the Quick Strips result. Um, it doesn't really look like it did any more work than the previous section, uh, Multi Strip in section 4. I, I actually think it did a little bit worse. Jasco in section number 6 actually looks like the winner here. Um, I think it took off the most amount of paint, and I'm convinced that it, this could have looked even more impressive if I gave it more than 2 hours to work. Aircraft in section number 7 wasn't all that impressive. It was slightly better than Quickstrip in section number four, 5, which by the way is made by the same company as Aircraft. Um, Aircraft is a little bit more expensive than the Quickstrip, so I guess it makes sense that it would perform slightly better. So out of the 7, which ones are making it to the next round? Um, so first, it's easy to eliminate number 1 and number 2 because they really haven't done anything here. And as much as I hate saying Citri Strip, uh, it did show a, a bit of promise in doing some work, and in terms of consistency, it's my favorite, so it's making it to the next round. Multi Strip uh, is also definitely passing to the next round as well, because I think it did the second best in this test. Uh, between Quick Strip and Aircraft, both made by Clean Strip, I'm just going to eliminate Quick Strip because it did worse. And Jasco, as the best performer so far out of the seven, is also passing to the next round. So the next challenge is, I think, is going to be much easier than the first skid plate test, and that's in the engine bay. I purposely uh, chose the first challenge to be the toughest so that I can easily eliminate a few of the products and I wouldn't have to continue testing all seven and keep wasting time. So in this test, we'll apply a small but a very thick coat of each of the four remaining products in the engine bay, which should have two layers of paint, the outer layer and the primer underneath. And let's see how they do. This is a bit more of a vertical surface than the skid plate, so we'll be able to tell how well the products do in terms of sticking to the surface and not dripping down too much. And also, since this area is, has a much softer paint than the skid plate, we'll just let each of the products work for roughly about 15 minutes and uh, we'll apply a thick enough coat that we can just skip covering them up with a plastic sheet. So one thing that I noticed was that the Jasco and the Aircraft paint strippers, the, the last two, six and seven, they started working immediately, softening up the paint as I was brushing the products on. You can actually see the melted blue paint on the paintbrush, something that I didn't notice with the first two products. Um, I think I can already tell what the result is going to be here, but we'll give it 15 minutes anyway and see what happens. It's been 15 minutes, so let's see how they all did. Uh, first thing that I'm gonna do is wipe the excess product off before scrubbing the surface. And by the way, that's not some spray on wax product that I'm using, that's just a spray bottle that I use for isopropyl alcohol and water mix. So the citrus strip uh, looks like it flowed down a little bit more than I thought it would given its thickness, but that could also just be because I applied a lot more product than I should have. And using a metal brush, it's really easy to scrape off the top blue layer paint, uh, but you can tell that the primer underneath is relatively untouched. And, and in fact, it's so cleanly removed the top, only the top layer that if I was only interested in removing the top layer and keeping the primer layer intact, uh, I think this is the product that I would use. The multi strip did a much better job of staying in place, but the effectiveness of the paint stripping was just a bit worse than the citrus strip in number 3 section. Uh, so while it also took off the top layer and was ineffective against the primer layer, upon closer inspection you can see that the multi strip left a blue haze on the surface of the primer when the citrus strip did not. It's not really a big deal either way though. 
Moving on to Jasco in number 6 and Aircraft in number 7, both of these products actually didn't do a great job of staying in place and both dripped a bit. And once again, I'm noticing that the Jasco is an easier product to clean up than the Aircraft. In terms of performance though, these two did do a much better job than the first two in the test. Uh, both products were able to not only get through the top layer, but also do a bit of work on the underneath primer layer in just 15 minutes. And it's starting to look like we actually do get what we pay for in this instance. In both of these sections, we can clearly see that the shiny metal underneath is um, coming through. And I actually wondered what would happen if I gave it a little bit more time to work. So I applied a second coat to all four of the test sections and I waited for another 15 minutes. I also wanted to test whether the first two cheaper products would do any work if I apply the products directly onto the primer layer instead of making it eat through the top layer first. After waiting for another 15 minutes, the first two products, the citrus strip and the multi strip, just didn't do any more work to the primer even when they were applied directly on top. And I don't know how they would have done if they were allowed to work on the section for something like 24 hours, but given how much progress the more expensive products made in the same amount of time, I don't really think I need to um, do a 24 hour test. I think that would be pointless. On the next two, the results were pretty impressive actually. Both the Jasco and the Aircraft products had no problem eating through the blue top layer in just a few minutes and were able to strip the primer away as well fairly cleanly. I don't think one performed better than the other, but it's clear how much stronger these two are compared to the first two. So out of the four remaining competitors, the Jasco and the Aircraft in positions number 6 and 7 are definitely passing to the next round and will allow the Citrus Strip to continue as well, representing the best of the cheaper strippers since it did beat out the Multi Strip in stripping performance, so we'll eliminate Multi Strip for the next round. And in a surprise move, we'll allow number one, Max Strip, to re-enter the competition for the next round just to see, or just to show how ineffective the cheapest product is compared to the rest. So the final test is going to be on this rear spoiler that I'm cleaning off now. Uh, this car has been repainted before, so I'm expecting to find several layers of paint here. But I do believe that it was a single stage paint job with no clear coating. Um, so I, I honestly don't really have much idea how any of those paint strippers are going to perform here. Let's just find out. The test methodology here is a bit of a combination from the previous two tests. So we're going to do a small spot with ample product, which is then covered by plastic wrap, uh, and it's allowed to work for about 30 minutes. Max strip in position number one, <laughs> we probably shouldn't have let it back into the contest because it didn't do anything as expected. Uh, it barely made any perceivable mark on the paint surface, and even after scratching with a metal brush, there was really no paint that was getting taken off. So only upon very close inspection you can actually see the outlines of where the stripper made contact with the paint. Citrus Strip didn't do much better here either, although I was secretly pulling for this one since I wanted to give you guys a hot tip on how to save a bit of money by using a cheaper product. But no, it did only slightly better than the Max Strip and both of the first two contestants didn't do anything noteworthy, so um, I guess that's too bad. Jasco in position number 6 did a lot considering that it was only 30 minutes. Uh, it actually got most of the paint off down to the bare metal and I was pleasantly surprised that it worked so well. Uh, what you're seeing here, I'm actually not sure if this is a really thick coat of primer underneath or actually some body filler. Uh, I, I, I think it's body filler but whatever it is, Jasco actually dissolved some of that as well. An aircraft in position number 7 did a similar amount of work yet again to the Jasco. In terms of performance, it's really pretty tough to tell these apart. Um, aircraft was also able to get down to the bare metal and dissolve some of the body filler as well. Uh, it's pretty cool stuff. 
Since these last two products work so well, I decided to give it one more coat and let it work for another 15 minutes, uh, hoping to get down to the bare metal clean this time. I also applied some Jasco in a new spot just to give you guys this cool footage of paint bubbling up, and it's, it's not that fun to watch paint dry, but it is pretty interesting to see paint get stripped chemically. So one thing to take away here is that you can notice that the paint starts bubbling up where the product is the thickest at the bottom because it's pooling up, although the entire contact patch does get stripped eventually. So back at the original test spots, you can see uh, how the strippers were basically able to get down to the bare metal by working on the remaining final layer. And it's not extremely clean, but with a little bit of slight brushing and washing, you can clean the rest of this stuff off. So after all of that testing, what can we finally conclude? Well, the cheapest two products, the Max Strip and the Easy Strip, were basically useless in all tests, so I can safely say don't buy these if you're planning to use them on your car. Like I'm sure they can be effective against other types of paints, um, like paints that are used on furniture for instance, but we found these to be altogether ineffective in our automotive use case. And the middle three, the citrus strip, the multi strip, and the quick strip, we can eliminate as well. Um, although these can work on some types of automotive paint, they were far less effective and take a lot more time to work than the two most expensive paint strippers we've tested. Which leaves the last two products, the Jasco and the Aircraft, and in terms of effectiveness, they performed very similarly. Although, if I had to pick one, I'd give just the slightest edge to the aircraft. Um, but in terms of my recommendation, I'd actually give the nod to the Jasco, given several other factors. Uh, for instance, Jasco is easier to clean up when it's dried because it's colorless, and for some reason it dissolves better than the aircraft, and maybe much more importantly, especially if you're working in an enclosed space or indoors, the, um, the Jasco produces a lot less smelly fumes than the aircraft does. Uh, the aircraft has such a strong smell that even after weeks of working with it, I'm smelling it still in my pretty well ventilated garage. So all things considered, uh, we'll crown Jasco Premium Paint and Epoxy Remover to be the winner in this contest. And for better or worse, um, it does seem like you get what you pay for um, when it comes to paint strippers. And I guess the one other thing to note in conclusion here is that if you're trying to strip paint from a variety of different surfaces on your car, consumer grade paint stripper is not the magic one size fits all silver bullet solution that you may have been hoping for. You will need to combine the usage of a paint stripper with other mechanical methods like grinding, sanding, or media blasting, but um, paint strippers will definitely help in some situations, especially if you don't want a crazy amount of dust everywhere. Also, even if you know what the best performing paint stripper is, and you should know at this point, uh, it really does take some trial and error to figure out how to make it as effective as possible, and um, since this testing was conducted, I've been using the Jasco paint stripper quite a bit, and I'll try to make a separate video on how I found best to use it. Alright, well that concludes this video. Um, I hope you guys found the testing somewhat amusing at least, and hopefully useful, since for some inexplicable reason I spent more than 20 hours making this video. Uh, well, see you guys next time.